Hi, this is Katie Taylor, and I will be teaching a math lesson on perimeter to third graders. All right, class, if you guys will open up your math folders, I will um, start the lesson today. Um, make sure you guys turn it to the page um, that we last left off um, yesterday. Okay? So today, guys, we're going to be learning about perimeter. All right? And it's going to kind of build off of what we learned about yesterday. And yesterday we talked about what it is, what, what types of shapes there are, what types of polygons there are, what makes a polygon. Okay, can anybody give me an example of a polygon? Susan. Triangle. Good. Ron. Decagon. Good. Uh, Jared. Hexagon. Very good. Um, what about the letter C? What does the letter C mean? Is that a, is that a polygon? No. Good. Why not? Good, because it is not a closed figure. Very good. Um, what about, let's see, a, hmm, a triangle. Yes, it is. Okay, good, because it has angles, and because it has sides, and it's a closed figure. Very good. So today we're going to be kind of building off of that. We're going to talk a little bit about what it is to find a perfect. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a closed figure, okay? So, you know, in Ms. Taylor's class, I hate learning things that we don't need to know. In fact, I don't teach you things that you don't need to know. So what we're going to talk about today really is important, okay? There's a couple of things that you're really going to see it impact your life. First of all, the tax, okay? We all know that it's going to be coming this year in third grade, okay? And when we take that tax test, I guarantee you will see perimeter somewhere on the test. So, if anything, you're going to need it today to figure out, or to, to, in order to pass tax. Okay? Another reason, to build a fence for your home or your garden. Okay? Just this past weekend, it's springtime, I'm starting to build my garden at home. Okay? I have a little, little area that I'm starting to grow some tomatoes and watermelon and cantaloupe. Okay? And I have to fence this off to keep the deer and the bunnies out. All right? And I'm sure, raise your hand if you've seen your parents already start doing that. Absolutely. Okay, it's springtime. It's, it's fun stuff. So I use perimeter to find the distance around my, my vegetable, my garden, so that I can buy the fencing, go to Lowe's and buy the fencing to, um, to build my fence. All right? So perimeter is something that you're going to use, whether it's building a fence around your entire home, around your garden. Okay, either way. Another great example is those of you who maybe want to be an engineer when you grow up, okay? Making plans on, on a building, um, workers, how, you know, measuring tool or measuring uh, supplies that you're going to need, okay? Those are all things the perimeter is going to impact, okay? So, hmm, okay, now we know that perimeter is important. We know it has to do with shapes. How do we figure it out? Well, we are going to... The perimeter of any closed figure is found by adding all the sides, okay? Adding all the sides. It's very, very simple, guys. All we have to do is add all the sides. So real quickly, we're going to watch a video that I found, and just listen to the words and look at the pictures, and I want you guys to start to use this stuff so that when you're sitting in that test on the tax day or when you're sitting there trying to figure out your garden, maybe this tune might just kind of pump up your memory and, and help you remember, okay? Just a sec, let's get this back. Okay. And again, while we're watching this video, we're going to be thinking about reasons why we are going to need to know how to find perimeter. Okay? Even this guy needs to know how to find perimeter. With photo slideshows in the new Yahoo Mail. Oh. 
what you guys think? Pretty good? I thought so. I, I thought you guys might enjoy that. A little less of me talking and more listening. Alright. So we've done our dance, okay? If you will turn to the example part of your notes, we're going to just quickly put some of these notes in there to get started, okay? So, finding the perimeter. When we see our formula for perimeter, we're going to see perimeter equals P, alright? Why might perimeter equal P? Because it starts with P. Very good. Okay, same with sides. We're going to see the letter S to represent sides. So, when we're working through to find the perimeter, we're going to do P equals S plus S plus S plus. Okay, because we're adding all the sides. Everybody say it together. One, two, three. Adding all the sides. Very good. Okay, so we have four sides. Okay, we have a side that's five millimeters, six millimeters, five millimeters, and six millimeters. Okay. When we do the math, 22 millimeters. The perimeter of this object is 22 millimeters. The distance around the object is 22 millimeters. Okay, example two. So again, we have our formula written up here. Make sure that you guys are writing this down as I'm talking. Okay, perimeter equals S plus S plus S. If you want to draw a quick just snapshot or a quick picture of this, that's great. All right. So, when we add all the sides, um, Jacob, can you tell me what maybe our first step is? Good, writing the formula down, which we've already done. Next step, jo uh, Jake. Good, we're going to write it down. P equals, okay, go ahead and read it to me. P equals 4 plus 10 plus 12 plus 10. Very good job. Okay, now, if you guys want to use the calculators that I put on the corners of your desk, go ahead and do that. Great, and what is our answer? P equals all together. 36 centimeters. Very good job. Now, do, is it important to list the centimeters, the measurements? Absolutely. Just like we talked about, it's going to be it's going to be important when I go to the store if I'm buying, you know, 36 centimeters worth of measurement, 15 miles or 36 miles a cent, you know, it's going to matter that measurement. So make sure we write it down. Okay? Now, this part I want you to try on your own. Just because I have so much faith in your intelligence I just want you to try this one on your own, and I'm going to go around and check on your work and kind of guide you if you need a little help, okay? Again, I've given you the formula to start. Very good job. Very good job. Okay, make sure you write those measurements down. Good. Very good work. Very good work. Good. Now, look here because I think you might have forgotten one of the sides. So double check your math. Very good. Good. Okay. So we've written our equation down like I've seen everybody has on their paper. And when we write it out, we have 15. Our perimeter is equal to 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15. And when we do the math, okay. Jake, did you re-look re over your, your math? Did you find your mistake? Okay, you did forget one of your sides. I'm actually glad you made that mistake, Jake, because what I wanted to tell you guys is when you are finding the perimeter, it is so important to go clockwise. Okay? Even if, I mean, if you want to go counterclockwise, do it too. What I do is clockwise. Just It helps me remember. Okay? But go clockwise because as, as the math starts getting a little bit harder, we're going to start to notice that we're going to be missing sides that we have to figure out or they're going to be curved in, okay? And it's going to be so important that we add all the sides because I really, if I was, again, building a garden or building a fence around my house, or maybe, I'll tell you what, I'm building a dog run for my two dogs.